Good morning guys and gals. Hope you're all doing well out there. So today, Wavy and I are distracting ourselves from the project at hand. <laughs> Getting little things done, but you notice there's there's no door on the front there and have not made the doors yet, but <clears throat> I found this Scion XB for sale down in Wisconsin about three hours away. And I love those cars. You saw me using one on my channel here for years, called it the metal tent. And I do like my my Echo, it gets 50 miles to the gallon, whereas the little XBs only get about 32, 33 if you try really hard, because they're basically just boxes on wheels. But <clears throat> great cars nonetheless. And I saw one pop up on Facebook last night for a good price. And it's there's a little more to it. So we're gonna make a little vignette adventure out of this. We're gonna ride, well, let me turn the phone around. So I basically have two options to go fetch it on my own. That would be drive my truck down with my tow dolly at, you know, 15, 16 miles to the gallon at four bucks a gallon of gas, or ride my scooter. This is the one I have here in Hontanagan at the moment and uh, and loaded in the back of the Scion. And I, I texted the guy or I messaged him and asked if he'd help me load it. He said, no problem, it'll be sticking out the back, but <laughs> I've done it before with a smaller scooter with the little Elite. So we're gonna make an adventure out of it. Kind of take the back roads down to Friendship, Wisconsin. What a nice name, at Good Omen. So stay tuned. Go run and poop and pee. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Well, while Wavy's pooping and peeing at the park here, I'll tell you guys a little bit about what I've been doing to the barge lately. So, uh, installed a little two burner propane cook stove, cooktop, I guess you would call it. I got it out of an old camper, truck camper that finally fell apart. And, been robbing all the, you know, appliances out of that that I can before I take it off to the dump or burn it or something. We, uh, the heater saga. So, I have a couple of these diesel heaters that I've had for a couple of years. They're the, the self-contained unit. And I probably could make them work, but it's actually a lot harder to find a spot on the barge that works to install this. A heater than it appears or at least I was expecting I finally settled on this this spot in the corner uh, in the kitchenette in the front it's not exactly ideal but I really don't want to put the unit outside <sighs> figured out that the, the, the self-contained unit is probably not the right model so I got one of these ones that have the external gas tank fuel cell and it came in the mail and it's all busted up and broken so I I contacted Amazon and I couldn't believe it. So only, you know, I'm always expecting like just the run around and like, you know, they're trying to deter you from anything to give your money back. But it took like 15 minutes. I talked to this nice girl in Guatemala, <laughs> had a nice conversation with her. She told me about the music she likes. I even looked up a little bit on YouTube. She seemed like a total sweetheart. And they refunded my money, about 180 bucks. And they said, don't bother sending it back. They don't, don't even need to send it back. If you can fix it, you can fix it or use the parts you need to, to as spares for the next one you order or whatever. So I'm going to see if I can fix it. Um, I don't have real high hopes because it's it has something to do with the structure of the casing and the, the unit inside, which I think because the way it spins in a fan, I think it's going to end up going go, 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 because the mounts are broken. But we'll see. I'll, I'll at least try it. If you know if it doesn't work, I'll, I've got plenty of extra parts and I'll probably order another one. So so yeah, the saga. Well, I also tried a, a propane heater with a vent, you know, like a like an ice shanty. They call them Mr. Josh's or like uh, new new ways. Really popular out here in the Midwest for ice fishing and stuff. And I have a couple of those. And I, you know, entertaining the idea of putting that in its place. But diesel would be better for many reasons. So I'm gonna try at least try to put the diesel in. And little little other odds and ends, put up a little curtain for the back, which I, then I can have like a little bathroom in that back area back there for guests. And if I ever have a, a lady guest or something, <laughs> if that ever happens. Uh, 
yeah, little stuff. Basically, dodging, making the doors. <laughs> Those doors are going to get to end up getting everything done. So, <laughs> and then I'll finally do the doors right before we leave. So, okay, guys, I think I'm going to go grab Wavy and we're going to hit the road. So, uh, lots more to come. Stay tuned. Wavy, let's go. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. This way. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. stopped here on this bridge for a second I want to show you something for those that are kind of fans of this part of the world you know I know they're not not a lot of my viewers are from Ontonagon because Ontonagon's so small right but but you can appreciate you know the beauty around here this is it's really just superior land but let me turn the phone around this is one of the branches of the Ontonagon River I'll have to look and see which one it's like either the east or the west branch it's uh pretty low this time of year and uh, you can, some of the salmon do run up these branches all the way up even into here in another month or so, maybe a month and a half. I know people come up here and they know what they're doing and they can catch them. And then something else I'll show you, I'll have to zoom in on it. These are called the Norwich Bluffs. And there used to actually be a mine out here. Um you know, like a hundred years ago or so. There was even a town and it even had its own little school. There's a cemetery out here, which I'll eventually have to show you guys. So it's, it's amazing. You know, there's, you can just roll by almost anywhere and there's, there's always a rich history. You know, there's usually a rich history of an area, you know, I mean, there's actually people that grew up there, went to school there. I mean, <laughs> I, I have hiked up in there before, a, a few years ago with, with my ex-girlfriend. We, I'm not much of a hiker. It always takes somebody to kind of, you know, suggest it and make me do it, you know. But once I'm doing it, I like it. But, uh, yeah, this is just a little quiet part of the world that you could, you know, anyone would just go rolling by. I'm on a, a side road called the Norwich Road that cuts. It's just another kind of alternative way to get from Lake Superior down to Highway 28, which is one of the main thoroughfares through the UP. And, you know, there's hardly ever anyone out here. You might see one or two cars in like 20 miles. It's a great scootering. We found this little roadside park here on the South Shore road of Lake Ogibbic, which I've never taken before. I've always wanted to, but it's a, it's a longer way to kind of go south and you got to take the time to do it. <laughs> if you're going, there's always a reason to take the shortest way unless you're, you're out aimlessly wandering for no good reason, which is a good reason. I didn't even know there was a Slate River and it looks like because there's pontoon boats over there, we, there might be a road across this bridge and we'll come back. There has to be because I see campers back in there. But that means that uh, if, there's, if there's pontoon boats parked in the mouth of the river there, they must be able to get over the, the edge. And, you know, one reason why I've never really explored this, this Lake Gogibic area, or the, the Lake Gogibic is a really big lake, not far from from Lake Superior in Ontonagon and I have you know thought about coming down and exploring it but it's one of those lakes where it it doesn't seem to have a lot of places to like get out of the weather and if it gets nasty if it gets really windy you know you're kind of exposed but so that's why I've you know never want you know necessarily come down here with like the barge or a or a houseboat or something but this has me thinking that maybe come down here and explore it and there might be I've never really looked at it close with maps, you know. There might be these little these little rivers coming in, these little inlets that a person could get off the lake, you know, to sleep on your boat at night and if the weather gets nasty. So, yeah, don't make don't make assumptions. I'll bet you Lake Gogibic has all sorts of little nooks and crannies that'd be fun to explore.
Well, this is Gogibic County Park. Lake Gogibic County Park. No power loading. $3 launch. That's actually not bad. <laughs> That's actually a reasonable price. Base of species. So we were just right up there a minute ago. This is the Slate River. Wow, this is really nice. Look at that. You got a bay back in there. Probably good fishing. Oh yeah, I'm coming here for sure. It looks like people get pretty comfortable here. Like they might rent their little camp spot for the whole summer or, you know, weeks or months. Because they have like firewood all stacked up and, uh, you know, they, they've made it their home. I, w I wonder what the story is. Because, I mean, this is kind of an out of the way place. But, uh, I mean, enough people have to know about it to that there would be some pressure on it to get these little camp spots, you know. But I'll do a little research on it and uh, try to include it in this video when I when I post it. Lake Gogibic County Park. This little rock cottage. Oh my goodness. I want one. I want to live right here. Another one of these old field stone buildings. They just scream this craftsmanship. So awesome. Turned into the bathrooms now, obviously. Howdy, guys and gals. <laughs> so it's a couple days later from when we were heading down there to pick up the, the new metal tent. <laughs> now, I know this is nothing really exciting. Everyone's seen an old car before, but uh, I love these things. I just want to take a couple minutes and just kind of share with you why I went and picked it up. Um, <clears throat> now, you, folks that have watched my channel for a couple years know that I used to have one of these little Scion XBs for... I mean, the thing lasted way longer than than it should have. <laughs> I beat that thing so badly. I mean, I didn't go out of my... I always changed the oil and stuff, but I hauled like a thousand pounds of solar panels and, you know, drove it down every dirt road in the UP you could imagine. <clears throat> the thing... Th these are really tough cars. For anybody that lives on a really tight budget and you want to get a car that'll do almost anything, including going camping... If you're six foot tall or under, it's a piece of cake. You can take the back seats out and make a little bed back there. And it's it's actually very comfortable. They're the biggest little car or the, the littlest big car, <laughs> depending on how you look at it, you'll ever find. Uh, first generation Scion XB, 2005 and six, I believe they made it for two years. Uh, they have this, they're awesome. I don't know, I could just keep going on and on, but th this one, now, I'll, let me turn the phone around. So I won't spend much time on this, guys, but you can see that the, the fellow that I got it from uh, put this extended top on it. He's, I don't meet a lot of people as, you know, like me. <laughs> and and he, he's just a, you know, fella, just a single guy doing his thing, living simply, traveling in the winters and stuff, a little older than me. <clears throat> and uh, obviously have the same taste. He, he likes these cars, too. He He's subscribed to the channel, and... He's probably watching this, and hello, and thanks for the good deal. And you found the perfect buyer for your little Scion. <clears throat> the inside, you can actually stand up. I can stand up inside, and uh, it's it doesn't look that great on the outside, you know, as far as, like, you know, just, like, uh, like aesthetically, you know, but it's, it's built really tough. I mean, this thing is... It's got, like, a rubber sealant around it. I might pretty it up down the road, you know, paint it or, you know, put my patented cedar tongue and groove on the, at least the inside, but maybe the outside too. But I just think it's so cool. I've actually had this idea, you know, before 
to do exactly this. And someone went and did it for me. And so piece of cake. I'll, you'll be seeing this car on my channel a lot. The Metal Tent 2. The Metal Tent 2. <laughs> Hopefully this one won't burn to the ground like the other one did. I, let me turn the phone around. I'll tell you that story. So I never really told this story, guys. But like about a year ago, it, I was delivering solar with my my old Scion. And it was just about to die. It was probably its last mission. The transmission was going out. I had to shift from first to third and then to fifth. And it was just on the edge. And I way overloaded it with solar. And I was taking it out to the east end of the UP. And I dropped off my first load. You know, I might have had, I don't even know, maybe 15 in the back or something. Way overloaded. And while I was on my way to the last destination to drop them off the the exhaust it was it was it was crunched down so low the car was so overloaded that it broke actually broke the exhaust and it was exhausting up towards the bottom of the car and it lit the carpet on fire it, it got the bottom of the car so hot that it lit the the carpet on fire and I start, I saw it, I could smell smoke and I was trying to get off to the side of the road and I, I could, and then I saw flames and then I just really started to panic. And so I just grabbed Wavy, grabbed my chainsaw and grabbed a few odds and ends, but I unfortunately forgot my laptop, which, you know, laptops can be replaced, but I had all my, I had that thing so dialed in, you know, all my passwords all kind of ready to go and <laughs> I still haven't replaced it. I've just been living with my phone ever since. And, you know, some other things, some tools and, and stuff like that. But, you know, at the end of the day, all that stuff can be replaced. I actually just stood on the side of the road and watched it burn. Uh, and the cops finally came and then the fire trucks came and they put it out. This these nice this nice girl, who was also an EMT, that worked in the office at the mine that was only about five miles away. Uh because I was just standing on the side of the road with my dog and like as much stuff as I could carry. We, I went back to the office and I hung out with them until like two or three in the morning until someone came and picked me up. And uh, so, yeah, you know, I never even really got all that upset about it. It cost me a hundred bucks to get rid of it. A tow truck driver just came and took it away and said, just give me a hundred bucks. And I felt really lucky that no more trouble came from it. No one was hurt. I wasn't hurt. I didn't lose wavy and all that stuff can be replaced. Like I said, so so yeah, that was a surprise ending to the metal tent. I've never had a car catch on fire and burn down before, and <laughs> hopefully I never will again, and I hope you never do. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Okay, guys. Um, working on the barge, trying to get it done. It's about five weeks, I think, until, you know, around the time of leaving, you know, tentatively leaving. We'll dial in as it gets closer, but early October, and here it is, the end of August. And it's beautiful, beautiful day fall is just starting it comes pretty early up here in the northland but we should have some at least a couple more adventures as long as i just stay consistent on working on the barge actually working on doors and i'm going to show you here uh the next video will probably be a beagle barge beagle build video and i'm finally tackling those doors so thanks for putting up with us thanks for watching and uh i'll see you guys soon